I hate that too when people say I bought a knife and I didn't like it, so I returned it. That's really crappy to do to the retailer. Interesting. You yeah. know, like if, if you bought it and something's wrong with it, then return it. But if you bought it and you just made a bad choice, yeah, you made yeah. a bad choice. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 82 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting and hear from the knife designers, the knife makers, manufacturers, reviewers, and anyone who loves knives. And that's what we're all about here on the Sunday weekend edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast. And Bob, another great show today, a yep. uh, YouTube a YouTuber that we're going to yep. talk to. Yep. One of my go-to uh, knife reviewers, Slicey Dicey, Brian Ball. He's a comedian. He's a bike expert, podcaster, and uh, reviewer of those products. But he's been doing uh, he's been doing knife reviews for going on three years as Slicey Dicey, and uh, he's just burning it up. And he he's got a great sort of rotation in and out of his collection. I'm gonna uh, you're gonna see he's a very disciplined uh, fellow. He can he can let knives come and go in a in a way that uh, is difficult for some like myself. But I, I think maybe that discipline uh, is part of the success of his channel. It's It's uh, been around for not too long, but it's doing great. And, of course, it's his personality and, and his uh, uh, and what he brings to the reviews himself. But also he, he maintains this discipline, uh, keeps his collection somewhat limited, and lets the knives flow in and out so he can review and bring us all information. All right. Sounds good. We'll get to that interview coming up next. But first, I want to remind you about theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's a page on the Knife Junkie website that features knives for sale. So if you're in the market for a new knife, be sure to uh, check out that page, theknifejunkie.com slash knives. And who knows, maybe you'll find your next knife right there. Got a question or comment? Call the Knife Junkies listener line at 724-466-4487. I'm here with Brian Ball. You know him as Slicey Dicey on YouTube. Uh, preeminent knife reviewer, and also uh, a man into bikes, comedy, and a lot of other things. But we're here to talk to uh, Slicey Dicey, Brian, about knives. How are you doing, sir? Thanks for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's cool. I, I do believe this is my knife podcast debut. I think so. Maybe I've done one. Yeah, but I, mean, I did my own for half a minute. But uh, I think this is my first guest appearance. Well, uh, we were just talking before we rolled that you, uh, you've you done a lot of bike podcasting. So you're no stranger yeah, to that. Yeah, and comedy podcasts and stuff. Yeah, everybody everybody podcasts now. It's, it's the wave of the future, I hear. Yeah, and you know what? It's so funny because it's actually right from the past. It's just like radio on demand. Yeah, so, yeah, so it just yeah. goes to show we're not, we're not uh, you know, we can handle long form. We're not long head. I was a sports broadcaster for a couple of years too. So, oh, really? Yeah, I spend, I spend a lot of time listening to the sound of my own voice. And and is it as fantastic as? Oh, it gets old. It gets <laughs> old quick. Yeah, it's like uh, no, I'm kind of tired of the sound of my own voice. So it's weird how like I don't know how long you guys have been doing this, but like your voice changes unintentionally. Oh, really? What do you mean? Yeah, you, like you kind of like your radio voice just becomes how you talk. Right. You know, and uh, it's it's weird. I've noticed that since I, I think my rate, my sports talk show was uh, 90, 98, 99. And since then, like, I still have tapes of my old shows. And it's like my voice is totally different now than it used to. Well, uh, I want to talk about your channel, but you, you just posted a video uh, where I was flabbergasted and you were obviously touched and blown away. But these uh this uh, viewer of yours sent you three magnificent gifts. Yeah, one of the best ones in my pocket today, actually. It's actually what I was carrying today. So, um, yeah, I, I should put it in a safe and never touch it, but uh, it's too good not to not to carry around. So, and, yeah. and, and the story behind your personal connection to it is amazing. But so uh, tell me tell me what this gentleman sent you. So this is uh, – he sent me a Spyderco Akuchi and a Spyderco Embassy. They're not in range of where I can grab them right now, which they're mm -hmm. both really cool too. I didn't know the Embassy existed because I'm not really into autos because I live in New York. So right. uh, I never even knew that thing existed. 
and that was really cool. And then the Yakuchi's great. I actually carried it last night on office party. It's a great little, you know, nice gentleman's knife. But uh, yeah, he sent me this uh, Hinderer XM18 with the Flying Tigers Warthog scale on it. And I used to be in the Flying Tigers. And I th- I had just assumed must be he knew that. But uh, he did not. It was just uh, he knew I was in the Air Force, but he didn't know that. And it was just um, forget the fact that it's a very expensive knife. Um, mm-hmm. Just that just. Uh, yeah, that got me. Uh, explain me. what is the flying tigers insignia uh, the flying tigers is uh they started in world war ii they were volunteers that fought for china before we actually entered the war uh pre pearl harbor and uh they were just volunteers and uh they eventually got incorporated into the army air corps and then you know the air force and they have just moved they moved around a whole lot uh when i was with them they were at pope air force base and we were what they called a uh, a composite wing i think i said it called it combined wing on my thing but it's composite wing and uh, that meant we had c-130s f-16s and a-10s oh, cool. and we were the only squadron allowed to have nose art and the nose art was this you know the typical you know with the with the tiger's teeth and all that we were the only squadron only wing allowed to do that and it looked pretty crappy on the 130s, looked okay on the F-16s, looked awesome on the A-10s. And that's still, when you see a picture of an A-10, it usually has the, the tiger's teeth on it. Oh, it's such a gnarly looking plane. It yeah. Have those teeth. Yeah, because the gun's coming out of the mouth and because that's just a flying gun. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. it's the most useful plane in the inventory. That's why they're still around. They keep threatening to kill it and they never do. But uh, yeah, I was in command and control there, so... I sat in a bunker. I didn't fly, but um, I just sat in the bunker and kind of coordinated stuff. Basically, was my uh, my job. So, is this where your love for knives began uh, in the armed forces? No, not really. Honestly, um, I had a sidearm. You know, we were always armed, but um, just a nine mil. I didn't even had it. I, I mean, I was qualified on the M sixteen, but I was terrible at it. Like, <laughs> I, I I can't shoot a long gun to save my life. Four times mark. Four times over marksman in the handgun though. But, oh, nice. Uh, couldn't couldn't shoot a long gun to save my life i'm very right-handed and very left eye dominant so it's oh. it's pretty difficult but a handgun i can shoot with both eyes open and i do good but um no not really i was in for four years i got out for two uh i was um doing a sports talk show and racing mountain bikes a little bit and um then i went back in the air force and i guess that's kind of where i started to get into knives uh i was over in germany and we were doing a joint exercise with a special operations guy and uh, uh, one guy just uh, with all these special operations guys. And they, one of them just, I, he had a cool knife, like it was an automatic and open it up. And I said, oh, that's cool. And he goes, here, you want it? And it got issued to me. Here, you can have it. And he uh-huh. handed it to me. It turned out to be a Benchmade AFO. Oh, sweet. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about knives at the time. So this was probably 2003, four. And I kept it around. And, you know, I had other, I had other knives. I had my dad's, you know, old, um, Swiss Army knife, that kind of stuff. But uh, no, I really, really wasn't that into them until only about three, well, I mean, no, I guess now about four years ago. Yeah, that's when I really started getting into it. I finally went out and bought myself a uh, CRKT um, M16 of some variant. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember which one it was. There's so many. And, um, and I liked that. That was cool. But I think the one that finally got me, and I did a video about it, so the knife that broke me is... Uh, I bought a, a Spyderco Manix 2 lightweight, and mm. and I was like, you know, these things are pretty cool. And I really got into it then and started buying more. And then I started the channel in November two years ago, and wow. that was it. And it took off, and it became a thing. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to put some effort behind this. It sure has become a thing. I mean, you, you came on my radar probably not too long after you started because i'm always trolling for knife videos you know oh yeah me too how yeah. it is and uh yeah, so all of a sudden here you were and uh doing cool stuff too i mean now at this point you you have your weekly live show on sunday nights uh brews and blades yeah that's been a lot of fun and you also have the battle to the death series the battle to the death yeah and and uh Which, what which an awesome... i can't i can't put in the title or the description i get demonetized 
<laughs> so I can I can say it. I can say it, and they're fine with it. But I can't. So wait. Put it, I, I, now I'm trying to think of how you write it out. Do you do? Uh, I just don't write it out. I just out versus... I just say whatever versus whatever, and okay. then and then I just <laughs> so say it ridiculous. in the video. But yeah, it's just their weird little rules. Like the funniest one I ever got demonetized was um, the we malice because oh. I I put we knives malice, <laughs> and they demonetized it. But I took the word knives out of it. And it was fine. We have so much malice, you know, it's all good. Yeah, it was Put like the, knives, it was like the just... knives and the malice. I guess I hit two words they don't like. Yeah, So Tri- triangulated. And then with the yeah. we, it sounds like you're trying to organize. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Like a, <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah, you're right. They probably thought I was trying to organize a protest or something. So, okay, I'm trying to get it to the very heart of it. There was a moment where you like, uh, before you bought that Spyderco uh, lightweight mm-hmm. Manix and and uh, you started getting into them for some reason or another. Was there a uh, okay? Uh, just lay it background for you. For me, it's uh, uh, martial arts and aesthetics. I love the thingness of them, and then I also like the weaponiness of them because I've been doing Kali for a long time, and it yeah. ties in. What was the? What was the? Was it a, an actual need, which I don't have? It's more of a fan, fascination. I just like mechanical things, and I you know, working on bikes all the time out in the garage. And I got tired of having, you know, crappy knives and stuff. And um, I just needed a good knife. And I bought that M16 and it was all right. But I, I, I'm one of those kind of guys. I do research about products after I buy them. <laughs> so uh, I went down to like, I don't know, like, a, well, it's not Bass Pro Shops. I can't remember what we had here. They're gone now. It was one of these big, you know, box store things. And I bought the M16 and then I got, then I got home and I looked on YouTube and looked up videos and I found, you know, guys like Nothing Fancy and, you know, Shabazz and stuff like that. And I started watching the videos and, and then I, I do believe, I think it might've been Gideon's Tactical, I think maybe did a review about the Manix 2 Lightweight and about how amazing it was. And that was the first knife I ordered online. And I got it and I love it. Still have it. Just a great knife. Uh, very excited that they're coming out with a new one with that new steel in it. I'm kind of exp- excited to see that. That's Is that the, the Spy 27? 27? Yeah. yeah. Um, don't know if it's going to be good or not, but I don't care. It's another. It's an excuse to get another Manix 2 lightweight, so it's, yeah, yeah. it's fine. Um, but yeah, and I got into that and then I started watching more and more of the videos. I bought a couple more and then um, actually, I've told this story before on, on my live show and stuff, but uh, in November of what was it, 2017, my dog died, and um, her last act on this earth was to bite my hand quite badly. Uh, she was already drugged up halfway through the process of having her put down, and she didn't know what she was doing. But uh, it hurt my hand enough that I couldn't really type, and the uh, bike industry shuts down November and December. Anyway, and that was my main occupation at the time. So I had nothing else to do, and I was sitting around watching knife videos. I thought, you know what, I could maybe I could do that. I think maybe I could I could do that. I've been a broadcaster before, you know, and, and I know about reviewing stuff. I've been, a pro- been reviewing products for 20 freaking years. So, like, I know the basics of it. So I went down to Best Buy and bought a crappy, you know, table mount thing for my iPhone and, and shot a few videos. And two months later, I had like a thousand subs. And I was like, well, I guess this is a thing now. I have a nasty habit of turning job or turning a very good hobbies into jobs mm. so that's kind of what i've done with this and it's it's kind of taken off and and i really like it. i like the people i've i've had i expected more bad reactions than i've gotten by a, a, a by a long margin um i don't fit the demographic 100 percent, so i wasn't sure how that was going to go and what do you perceive the demographic well, I'm not, I'm not into guns mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't carry a gun. I just don't, I, I used to, and I just don't like it anymore. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not particularly, uh, GOP oriented mm-hmm. and I would consider myself a moderate, but I'm not like a super, you know, Republican kind of guy. And that's just how I assumed everybody was going to be. And it's not, you know, every it's, very wide range people, you know, going to blade show was great. Everybody was cool. Like I didn't have any run-ins with anyone. It was, it was great. And it was really eye opening. and it was just like, yeah, we're all just, we're all just folks who like sharp things. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's an amazing cross section of people who are into knives. I, I find, uh, just because, uh, that's my background in training. I find a lot of, uh, 
arts people in the arts gravitate towards yeah. towards uh, knives as as tools and as things of beauty and amazing engineering and uh, you really can be surprised. My wife's a photographer and we were at an art show and um going to see one of her friends and show this you know beautiful photography and and um that was one of the few places where somebody walked up to me and said, "Hey, what's that in your pocket?" You know, they saw the pocket clip and then then they had a spider co something or other in their pocket too and it was uh, it was kind of cool. Yeah. It's it's probably creepy, but if I can identify it, I'm like Oh, how do you like your Kershaw leak? And I'm like, eh, why are you looking at my pants, man? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I noticed the clip, all right? Yeah, I, I had to one time scare the hell out of me. I thought for sure I was in a lot of trouble. Um, I was pumping gas and cop pulled up at the pump across, started pumping gas. And I was carrying a knife that is, it's a, so in my town, there's a three inch blade limit in, in the city of, of Rochester, but it's only like a, uh, violation if you get a ticket for it's like a traffic ticket it's not a big deal mm -hmm. um but i knew i had a, a three and a half inch knife in my pocket and he pulled up and was he's pumping his gas and he looked at me and he goes is that a hinderer oh. and i was like yeah and he goes can i see it and i thought oh i'm screwed <laughs> and i pulled it out it was a three and a half inch hinderer and uh he just took he just looked at it flipped it a couple times he goes oh man this is really cool i've been thinking about getting one of them are they worth the money i'm like yeah they are and he's like okay cool here you go and handed it back to me and like he had no intentions of doing anything he just wanted to see it you know yeah he just, he yeah, just never that's... touched one you know it was funny one enthusiast from another he recognized that yeah clip. he just recognized the hinderer clip which is very distinctive yeah you know what they are yeah so how how has um having this channel and obviously having the channel uh, must inspire uh, acquisitions, uh, whether it's you buying or people uh, or, or companies offering mm -hmm. to send stuff to you, whatever. How has running this channel and being responsible for putting out content changed your collecting philosophy or, 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 or built your uh, collecting I philosophy? I would say it's eliminated my collecting philosophy. I mean, I don't – I have – I probably only own, I know this only, in, only I can say this in this podcast when anybody rolling their eyes, I think right. I only own about maybe, maybe 50 <laughs> at the most I love it. and probably only like, you know, 13 or 14 are for me. It's uh, mostly for the channel and I don't keep really expensive stuff very often anymore mm. uh, because like I said, I turn hobbies into jobs, so I keep track of the videos that people watch. And people on my particular channel don't watch the videos of the four or five hundred dollar knives. They, mm -hmm. they just they just don't. So I usually try and keep most of my stuff under under two hundred, like maybe two fifty. I have a couple that I go over every now and then, you know, mm -hmm. just to let people know that yeah, I know that stuff exists. But um, a lot of that stuff doesn't stay around very long. I guess maybe under 300, I guess is better. Yeah. Like 300 and under, like I, I have several of those, but it's, uh, and those get, those get watched, but anything over like 300 bucks, just nobody watches the videos. Hmm. So I used to have a lot more expensive stuff. And like when I do knife sales, people always say, um, Hey, uh, you know, why are you selling that? You said you love it. Well, I thought you loved that, man. I did, but <laughs> I did, but I need to buy more to create more content. So I got to feed the beast as I always say. And, you know, I do sell a lot of stuff that I like, you know I mean? I know the first one I did that with was uh, when the channel was pretty young. I bought a Sebenza, and it was great. But I'm holding it in my hand going, I can buy four more knives to review for this. So I sold it and you know, bought four more knives to review. And I have to do that a bit less now because now I can just ask nicely and companies will loan stuff to me mm -hmm. and, or sometimes give them to you, which is great. And if, if they do, I always, I always say so. But... I've been doing this long enough that getting a free knife doesn't affect me as far as bias and all that stuff. Because yeah. like it's it, I have a I have a seven thousand dollar recumbent trike in my garage right now. Like it it takes a lot more than a two hundred dollar knife to <laughs> to right. make me you know change yeah. my mind about something. Right. I have a review philosophy I've always had, and I stick to it. If you had to boil down your criteria for um, judging a knife. You know, whether it's worth your money or, uh, you know, I would say it's ergonomics for me primarily is the thing that I care the most about. Uh, if it's not comfortable to use, you're not going to use it. Mm -hmm. Steel matters you know, a, a whole lot. Uh, but, you know, some some companies do a really good job with subpar steel. Some do not. But overall, you know, is, is they have good steel is ergonomic. 
is it fun to use? You know, is that is not necessarily fidgety, mm-hmm. but you know, just fun to use overall. And then does it carry okay? I would say is my fourth. Those are the really only four things I really, I really care about. I bring it up in reviews because other people care a lot, but you know, a, a slightly off center blade or something doesn't mm-hmm. really bother me that much for something that I'm going to get for myself. It's annoying, but it's not something that really just makes me completely want to throw something in the bin. You know, people get so mad, you know, people get so mad. The, the blade is the quarter, whatever off center. It's like, yeah, does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Stop it. Or send it back to the company and get it fixed. Well, I don't, I'm just going to send the whole thing back and I don't want another one. Yeah. 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 They're dead to me now. <laughs> yeah. I hate that too. When people say I bought a knife and I didn't like it. So I returned it. That's really crappy to do to the retailer. Interesting. You yeah. know, like if, if you bought it and something's wrong with it, then return it. But if you bought it and you just made a bad choice, yeah, you made yeah. a bad choice. Resell it. Don't don't put it back on them. Exactly. Send it along. Someone else will get it. You know, yeah. who who will like it and and want to use it, and they'll get a deal. And that always feels good to do. You know, yeah. uh, I I've been uh, I've been on a little blade forums tear. I don't want to call it a tear. Uh, just a couple of recent. Uh, purchases. Um, I, I had to quit Blade Forums. I don't. I don't go on there anymore. Why? For that reason? I would reason? get so mad. I would just get oh. so mad about stuff. Yeah. Oh, you mean getting involved in conversations? Yeah, and stuff? yeah, yeah. So, so let me ask you: How important are Knife World scandals? <laughs> I mean, oh it's, my god, it's it is. I guess the one that I had I had to comment on was the this uh, HRC thing because it went everywhere not just blade forums not just youtube it was everywhere and that one i had to i had to kind of comment on a little bit but i try and stay out of them Mm -hmm. um you know especially if it involves like an individual person you know i don't want to get i don't want to get into that you mean if people are piling on a maker or something like that yeah it's usually like an individual guy it's usually like this is my like i'm not even going to say the names but we know four or five names that have come up in you know scandals in recent years and yeah and yeah, a couple of them I'm I'm pretty mad at, and they were friends of mine, and I don't talk to them anymore. But uh, I, I just don't I just don't talk about it publicly. Like there's no there's no point in it, you know. Yeah. So, what was your feeling about um, the HRC police uh, issue? I think that perhaps, perhaps the companies that spend hundreds of thousands of dollars hiring metallurgists and whatnot maybe they know what they're doing and maybe you shouldn't have a giant fit about it that was kind of my summary of it yeah some steels they run softer but some companies were doing that on purpose they knew they were running it too soft but that's the way they wanted it and if you don't like it then don't buy it you don't need to have a big giant about it you know did you engage uh um you said you this was one of the things that you had to chime yeah, in. Yeah, I, I made a video about it. But how did how did that go? What what was the reception like? Okay, because I know all those guys and I'm friends with them. And okay, I know okay. I know that I know their heart's in the right place. But I guess what upset me the most about that wasn't what they found. What they found is great information to know, absolutely. And I do stand behind them. It's a worthwhile thing they're doing. Uh what offended me was the glee, you know, just we found something wrong. We're smarter than everybody else. Let's make a bunch of memes and put them on Instagram. That wasn't cool. You know, that was just childish. And and that's basically what I said in the video. It's like, yeah, you found some good information people to have, but, you know, maybe Benchmade did it that way because they wanted to, and maybe you shouldn't have taken a victory lap, you know, over it. And that rubbed me the wrong way because my review philosophy is always I, I'll do if I if I review something and I know it's going to be bad and this is knives whatever I do I know it's going to be a bad review mm-hmm. I don't ambush anybody I let them know ahead of time what do you, well, I'm sorry what do you mean like the company yeah I'll contact the company and say hey this is I don't like this this is going to be a, a bad review wow and if and if if they give me their side I'll put that in the review doesn't mean I'm going to change what I said right but I'll put their side in it. You know, and that's that's all you got to do. Yeah, that that is an amazingly fair and uh, like level headed approach. I think it's just purely professional approach. Like, yeah, I just I think right. everybody should do that. And I was taught that I worked for Wired, and Wired dot com taught me that. Like, that was they taught me how to review things. 
And I'd already been reviewing things before I got hired by them, but they're the ones, Leander Caney, editor of mine, great guy. Mm -hmm. He's the one who taught me how to properly do things. And he taught me to do that. And he also taught me one thing that I will always remember. And it's, um, if you, I, I sent in a phone review that had a bunch of like battery drain tests and all kinds of really technical stuff in it. And he cut it all out. And he said, uh, if you put super technical stuff in reviews, the 25 people who care are just going to tell you that you did it wrong. <laughs> so don't do it. And that's the way I've always been with review stuff. Well, it's, that it's that like, rings true, man. Yeah, it's just that nobody cares. And the people who do care are going to tell you that your testing was wrong because it doesn't agree with what they want to think. So just don't just do not do it. Other people do it better than me. I also don't play a game that I don't think I can win. And those guys, there's Cedric and Ada, mm-hmm. you know, um, Super Steel Steve, other guys, they do so much a better job at steel testing than I ever will. So why why should I do it? Right. It can be fun, you know, to to watch a reviewer using the knife, you know, for a minute, cutting cardboard or cutting wood or whatever. But after a while, it, it that that grows tiresome. I mean, I enjoy the videos. I'm yeah. just saying they're better at it than I am. And oh, they, no, no, that's and, what and, they, and they catch so much flack, oh. you know, that it's just like, I'm not going to deal with that. Like I said, the 25 people who are carrying to tell you did it wrong. And right. I, I just don't I just don't want to get into it. So I don't. I have to say, it, it never would have occurred to me personally to contact the company to say, I'm about to put this thing up forever online. That's going to yeah. be lambasting your your hard work. And, but uh, it's a very, um, I, I like that. I'm up front and I say, I'm not going to change my mind. Yeah. Like, but, I've but already made my decision, that, but yeah. you should know, do you have an opinion about it? And that's better than putting it up and then asking for their their response later. You know, and, and in the knife community, I've done that three or four times, and all three times they haven't wanted to say anything. Huh. They've been like, no, that, that, okay, that's all right. Who do you think does it best? Who are your favorite uh, knife companies, in ter- not just in terms of product, but in terms of, you know, their, out, their, their forward-facing, their outward-facing look? To deal with? Yeah. Um, I would say Benchmade's always been pretty, respo- or pretty responsive to me. Spider Co. Most of the time, is it, when they're busy, they're busy though. That's kind mm-hmm. of just because everything goes, you know, through Sal and Eric. So when they're busy, they're busy. the Fair and Forge guys, oh yeah, always respond to me immediately. Uh, TRM is fantastically easy to get a hold of. Yeah, I would say those guys. So knives, bikes, comedy. We're going to get to the comedy in a second, but you now write for Knives Illustrated. Is that right? yeah? I just started actually. I just so tell me about that. So oddly enough. Uh, one of our very good friends is this couple we hang out with. And I guess I could best describe her as a drinking buddy. And um, she posted a picture on Facebook of her holding Knives Illustrated, like a copy. They were in a weird town somewhere and it was like on the newsstand. So she just was like, hey, my magazine's on here. And I'm like, what do you mean? That's your magazine. I never knew that's what she did. Like I knew that she was a magazine editor, but I didn't know what magazine it was. And then she was like, yeah, it's Knives Illustrated. I'm like, I'm slicey dicey on youtube and she was like what and, I was like, what? <laughs> and then um it just worked out so yeah it's a it's we both work from home from a magazine company which is based in california i believe and we live three blocks from each other Amazing. so it's uh in new york so um yeah it's cool i'm writing a few articles for the the june july issue it's you know it's print it's a, I mean, uh-huh. way ahead but um yeah the shot show issue i'll have a few articles in and then uh, yeah it's gonna be a thing what kind of um, articles or, or um, topics do you hope to tackle? Well, I'm, I'm doing an interview with Marianne Halpern from TRM in this one. Um, I'm doing a review of some kitchen knives, which I'm having to learn a lot about kitchen knives. Hmm. And um, then they have a Knives 101 monthly column. And I'm doing like helping people put together a basic toolkit for maintaining your knives. So oh, nice. It's gonna be stuff like that. Reviews, interviews, um, knives one on one stuff. And yeah, they've been uh previously more of a fixed blade sort of oriented magazine, but that's all changing. So do you think uh do you think in general that's where things are right now? Uh, folders mostly or I I mean for me it is. I don't I don't have that much interest in fixed blades. And like I said, other people do it better. It's the same thing again. It's like right, right. people ask why I don't review fixed blades, like because other people do it better. And it's I don't want to play catch up. And, you know, I'm 45 freaking years old. I don't want to. 
I've, uh, I think I've learned everything I can learn. <laughs> you know, I think my brain is full <laughs> sometimes. Right, right. So stick to what you know and what you yeah, learn. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't play games you can't win. Well, okay. So you mentioned TRM, and uh, I hope this isn't a leading question because mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get a, a specific answer out of you. But that reminded me, uh, I wanted to ask you what your favorite knife over 2019 was. Oh, the I, yeah, I did a video about it. So it's not a leading question. Yeah, the, the Atom. Okay. Yeah, the, the TRM Atom is just a phenomenal knife. It's funny, whenever I show that knife, the, the Atom less than others, but usually when I ever show a knife that's kind of hard to get your hands on, people get a bit upset. Like some, there's always <laughs> a small amount that they're like, yeah, but I have to wait three months to get one. Well, yeah, yeah, but it's still great. And they're working on that. They're getting it faster. I know like they've posted on Instagram, they've got a couple new big giant CNC machines and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, Marianne told me that they're hoping to have their wait their wait list down to like less than three months instead no, of like cool. six months. And um, you know, by middle of next year. And and I I have confidence that they'll get that done. I mean, right now they're it's not that bad. I ordered a nerd, I ordered a nerd about three months ago, and I, it arrives tomorrow. And I don't get anything special from them at all. Mm -hmm. Like I don't. I just want to specify that. And neither does Shabazz because <laughs> we're the two that kind of make them all sell out and. We don't get anything special from them. We pay retail. We get on the wait list just like everybody. Oh, yeah. They might give us some free scales or something, but like we don't, right, we, right. We, we don't get to bump to some guy. Actually You're not just chilling for TRM. No, some guy <laughs> actually just messaged me on Instagram today and said, "Would you be willing to sell your t your Adam?" And I said, "Nope." And he goes, "Oh, but come on, you can just call up and get another one." I'm like, uh, "No, I can't. Yeah. No, I can't." Yeah. And it's like I have to. I have to get back on the waiting list just like you guys. And he was like, "What?" And he was like, he, "Like he didn't believe me." <laughs> and I was like, no, I I bought mine. I paid I paid the full whatever it was, two twenty whatever it was to get it, and um, it was worth it. So, what about that knife, uh, the Adam in particular? I mean, because I need to get one of those, and uh, but I have not gotten on a list, and I'm I am one of those. So this is a this is a testament to your reviewing that people watch your review, and and before it's even done, they're trying to. Uh, they're trying to order it. So, yeah, it, so that's it a testament to your, your reviewing ability. And people get mad at me about it. What I like about it is uh, basically I'm not a heavy user and I don't try to like portray myself as that. I mean, I use a knife a lot, but it's cutting cardboard and stuff. I'm not doing, you know, I'm not out chopping down sequoias. But what I like about it is just that really slicey blade. They're very well put together. It's a total gimmick, you know, that you can change the scales and make it look however you want, but it's a cool gimmick. You yeah. know, it's 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 fun and it's easy and now like mine I have four sets of scales for my Atom and I do swap them around a fair bit and I just I just really like it. The action is great. It's not like a fun fidgety thing. Mm -hmm. Uh but it's just a really useful freaking knife and it fits my hand really well. It's really light and slim and easy to carry and I just I love it. It, it has a utilitarian beauty to me. It's very simple and yes. sleek. You know, I, yeah. I can go from one extreme to the other. Like, give me as many finger grooves and choils as you can give me, you know, mm -hmm. and, the, and the curviest, weirdest uh, blade you can give me. Yeah. Or give me clean, you know, and beautiful. And something about that, Adam, to me and to my eye, that is so far their most... They're, they're, they're most refined in terms of proportion and stuff. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Proportionally, it's it's the best looking one. Yeah. So the Nerd, that is that a slip joint? No, the Nerd is basically, um, you know, the Atlas, the little slip joint? Yeah. Which I have one of those, which I love. I, whenever I go to Europe, that's what I always carry. That's the only knife I take with me. It's awesome. But um, it's basically a locking Atlas. Okay. They're about that size. So I don't know if it's exactly the same. I'll find out tomorrow. And it's got uh, it's got a thumb opening system that's more of a dimple than a hole. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. And it, you know, and, the, and that's kind of their thing now. They do that little etched in thing, but and it's you got the three rivers yeah. coming together. So, um, what are you looking forward to twenty twenty uh, knife wise? I'll, I'll 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 give you the quick and dirty of of me. I, I know this is not your in your wheelhouse at all, mm -hmm. uh, but to me. I'm really looking forward to the giant wavy bladed Chris Cold Steels coming out. Oh, I'm gonna get one. Of those. <laughs> like sure. I, I don't, I, I probably won't own it for long. But right. yeah, right. I got, I got to try one. <laughs> you know, it's like why not? Thank you, thank you. Uh, somewhat in that category, I want the uh, the new inexpensive Formax Scout. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get one of those. Yes, um, I have a Benchmade, the new Bug Out with the 
carbon spec tech dealer the CF elite orgasmic whatever they call it <laughs> yeah. you know CF elite yeah whatever it was um carbon fiber that doesn't look like carbon fiber yeah i'm gonna try that and uh i think those are the only two that i have oh i have my uh brian nado void oh uh, after i just gave that speech about not reviewing stuff over 300 dollars. but that's an exception it's brian nado they're amazing and i really wanted one so i got one well, it and, sounds um, like this is one for you yeah this is for me yeah. i'm really excited about getting that that should be arriving in uh, the next week or two what else have I seen? A lot of the CRKT and Kershaw stuff looks pretty cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm terrible at remembering like some of their names because they make no sense to me. Right. But um <laughs> but the the what's the the Thero, the one that I can't remember. There's one that CRKT I really like the look of. And uh, a couple of the Kershaws look cool. I kind of want one of the Kershaw Bala songs. Yeah. Like, yeah, the the blade looks really nice. Something about that blade. Yeah, man. something about that blade. And like in my first knife that I had as a kid was a bell song that my father bought me at a county fair. He made bad decisions. Uh, that, I was going to uh, that was one of the good ones, though. Yeah, no, but it was <laughs> luckily it was a piece of crap and as sharp as a butter knife. So I didn't <laughs> nice. I didn't ever cut myself with it. But I'm hoping I still have muscle memory from being 12 years old. You know, I don't know. But um I got it when I was 12. I probably fell apart by the time I was like 15. I don't remember what even happened to it. Um, I remember there was spray paint involved at one point. Um, but uh, it was it was fun to fiddle around with and fun to impress my friends with. And I, of course, that was that was before the internet. Yes. So uh, I didn't have videos to you know show me how to do it. So I just learned from like watching movies. I, I think you, know? you will feel it in your hand and it'll come right back. Uh, my wife and I experienced something similar to that. We got our hands on one. And uh, seeing her do it, seeing her flip it around like she was in high school, I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but I really, uh, that's, it's not bad. They're like, what, 120 bucks? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. It looks pretty nice for that. So that's, that's pretty tempting. And I never thought I'd be tempted by a battle song. I actually don't, I don't like all the flippy doos and those guys annoy the crap out of me at Blade Show. I was very glad this year at Blade yeah. Show that they, they squashed that. They, they threw some kids out for walking around flipping knives around they said we have a place for that it's the parking lot yeah, yeah. you know uh i've never been to blade show this will be uh our first year going but who's i i think i was talking to nick shabazz and he was talking about bally boys he was calling bally them. bros bally bros walking yeah. around and and you know no doubt isn't it is some very impressive skill involved oh um, absolutely but um, but take it outside yeah, I, I would I imagine in a, in a crowded hall, though. Yeah, it's probably not the place to be doing that. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's a bit annoying. So, uh, one thing I noticed from your channel right off uh, the bat was your sense of humor. Not that you're making funny review videos, but I could just I don't know sense your sense of humor, and then discover a little while later that you also have a career in comedy. You're yes. stand up comedian. Yeah, that's uh, that's becoming like uh, quickly my. Uh... It's almost my primary job now. Yeah, it's uh, it it was a fun hobby. I always wanted to be David Letterman when I was a little kid. <laughs> um, I'd always stand up and watch Letterman, and I always just wanted to do that. And um, screw Jay Leno, I always liked Letterman, and uh, I um, never had the opportunity to do it. I lived in the boonies uh, growing up, and which was a great place to grow up. Uh, not knocking it, um, playing in the woods, all that stuff, shooting guns, and all that fun stuff. But then. I uh, and I moved around a lot, and I just never had a chance to. And I moved here to Rochester eleven years ago, and um, I went into a coffee shop. They had a sign up saying that there's an open mic, you know, next week uh, or the next night. We went and watched it. I didn't go up the first time I went. I watched it, and I'd done a lot of public speaking for bike stuff, so I'd been in front of crowds. That didn't bother me. And I watched this open mic, and I thought, well, God, I, I won't be the worst, you know. Like there were some really terrible people on it, and I was like, I. I'm going to be better than that. And I spent a week and wrote five minutes and went up and did okay. Actually, a lot of people have bad experiences the first time up. Actually, mine went, mine went all right. I was happy. I got I got a couple big laughs. A couple jokes didn't do good at all. I knew to cut those out immediately. And um, I tried to do dirty stuff, and I, I'm not good at that. I don't do that anymore. I do dark stuff, but I don't really do anything that dirty. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, I just I got addicted to it. You get that first big laugh, and it's just like, you know you're hooked, you know, and, and then within, within like four or five months, I was hosting at the comedy club and, wow. and it was, uh, kind of like slice it. It just kind of took off and then it 
got out of hand and it kind of stagnated for a while for a, a couple of years because my mother went in a nursing home and I was, you know, I was focused on her and all, on all that. And I stopped going on the road and um, still not back on the road, but I'm doing a lot more stuff regionally, locally, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I, I, I have always had a fascination with stand up comedy and the fortitude it takes to get up in front of a crowd and and proclaim i'm funny and you know listen to me and you're gonna laugh and and really um you know when you can walk up there and make people laugh i mean what a that's like a gift you know and uh actually you just recently put up about what is it about a 20 minute set yeah yeah on YouTube? One of my, yeah one of my usual feature sets yeah oh man people should check it out it's hilarious and and uh the the thing i mean i have it has some swears in it. It has some swears. That's all right. We're all adults. We can <laughs> we can get through that. But but the uh, the the whole German thing cracked me up. There. Then that and that is that was a conversation that um, we had with. I was in the Air Force. Uh, we were command and control. We always make fun of the cops because the cops were like, it was a joke. You know your ASVAB score that that test you take when you're in high school, that your military application test or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. The lowest score in the Air Force was the police, because the the the, low, the Air Force has the highest minimum, but the lowest minimum was was the police. So we always made fun of them, and I just made that joke. I was like, one of them's going to say, "Halt over your shiza," and uh, and we laughed about <laughs> it for like days. And then I just remembered that. So that was actually one of the first jokes I ever told on stage, and I keep that in my back pocket. I know it's guaranteed to get a laugh, so I try not to use it because it's so old, but. I'll pull it out when I have to. But know. also the sign, you're not children. <laughs> I can't remember. Am, am I remembering that correctly? I didn't do the, <laughs> you're right. Funny. I'm sorry. In that video, I'm talking, thinking of the wrong joke. I didn't do the, I didn't do the Halt Aubrey Scheiss in that, did I? No, if this was a, no, you're talking about the signs. Yeah. 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 German people are weird. I love the country, but man, they're not, they're odd people. We have some close friends, some close family friends. And, and uh, I love just comparing idiosyncrasies, you know, between, between cultures because man they got them and and we do too they point out to me why do you eat with one hand under the table <laughs> like okay we're oh yeah they there. hate that <laughs> they hate that yep i get the biggest thing i got yelled at the last time I was in germany is i walked out of the restaurant with my soda can oh geez. They, they want it back because they want the the deposit oh they're recycling they're deposit. cheap no they're just cheap <laughs> it's not they're they're cheap and, oh, this old dude just started yelling at me. I'm like, what are you yelling? Oh, yeah, that stupid can. I had to, like, chug half a can of Fanta that I did not want to chug <laughs> and give just to give him the can back. And then I walked around burping for the next hour. It was just like, can I just, I'll just give you the five cents. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> they're, not, they're odd people. So where, where do you see the future of the Slicey Dicey channel? Uh, where, where do you want to take this? Um, I would still like to do some form of podcast. I don't know what it's going to be. Every time I get a partner to do it with, it's it's hard to time things out. Um, so there, there's going to be a lot more integration, I hope, with Knives Illustrated. So you may be seeing some of my videos on their channel. And I want to do a bit more EDC stuff, I think, you know, pens and wallets and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, I used to a bit, but, you know, people didn't watch it. So I kind of got away from it. And... I talked about starting a second channel to do that. That may still be what I do, but I don't think so. I think I'm just going to, I think if I do an EDC video, you're going to see, I try and do one video a day. I miss it sometimes, but I try to. So days I do EDC stuff, you'll see two videos that day instead mm -hmm. of, you know, okay. uh, instead of, I'm not going to knock any of the knife content out, but I would like to do that. And also because I just want to check out more cool EDC stuff. So you yeah, know, so yeah, and and people. It's partly I, so, it's partly self serving. I will not. I don't deny well, that. A tiny course, little bit, but you know, course. it's like I'm, you know, I want to get free wallets. <laughs> yeah, right, right <laughs> yeah. exactly. But it's been nice now to have a, a bit of an influence that I'm big enough now that um, between Instagram and and the YouTube channel that I feel appreciated. You know, people ask my opinion. Mm -hmm. I get prototypes sent to me. I can't even show people. You know. That's cool. You know, just to, what do you think about it? Just flip it around for, you know, a day and give it, send it back to us. And that's cool. I've got one downstairs right now, actually. But um, I very much enjoy that. I want to keep getting that way. I want to do more with merchandising and stuff. I mean, we have the little t-shirts and stuff down below the videos, but I want to do more with that. Maybe I'll design a knife someday. I don't know. Like, I'd always said, no, I'm never going to do that. And then, then Ben from Blade HQ, you know, Ben that used to be at Blade HQ, mm -hmm. Ben Banters, he just did one. Um, 
I kind of thought, well, Ben did it. You know, maybe, maybe I could, maybe I could do that. But I, I would, I would, I would probably get a second collaboration. You know, like that was one of the most common questions when I do those AMA things that people ask me is like, if you could design a knife, who do you work with? It's like mm-hmm. I call the guys at Fair and Forge, give them a rough, I, a rough sketch, have them make it work, and right. then send it on to somebody else. So it would be a three way wow. collab. You know, it'd be like slicey dicey Fair and Forge, Civivi, somebody you know, thing. That seems to make sense, especially if you're going to be doing it overseas in a language you can't understand. If you get in touch with someone like Fair and Forge, who already has like a uh, a well-worn relationship and not only that, but like serious CAD chops and they can just send yeah, files. It's, it's and- the CAD chops. I don't I have no clue how to do any of that stuff. Like I know what I like. I don't know how to make it work, you know, right. and that's, I did the same thing with bicycles. People have asked me to design bikes before and I'm just like, no, I don't know how to do that. Like, they're like, yeah, but you review like, you know, 30, 40 bikes a year. How do you, I'm like, yeah, I know what, I know what I like. Yeah. I don't know how to make it do it. I, you know, I, it's a, it's a completely different thing. It's like yeah. a race car driver. He doesn't know how the engine works. Right, right. He doesn't care. You know, it's just, it's weird. Do you, you drive that Honda to work every day, Bob. Why can't you put one together yourself? Yeah. 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 Mm. You put 200,000 miles in that Honda. <laughs> Change the third cylinder on the left-hand bank. Right, right but uh, <laughs> that hasn't come up in the last 100,000 miles. Yeah. So I want to ask you for a knife story, something mm-hmm. something funny or or harrowing or whatever. But before before you tell me that, I, I want to do a little speed round with you, if you don't mm-hmm. mind. So sure. I have 15 questions in that. And uh, there are 15. Yeah, God. it's a it's a it's an either or until we get to the last one. Okay. Goes a little bit something like this. Fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washers or bearings? Eh, bearings. Tip up or down? Oh, down. What, who, who's who ever answered up in this in this question? Tip up. That gets yeah. tip up gets a lot of people. People like tip up. I'm sorry, tip up. That's what <laughs> I meant. I'm totally freaking off here. I, I think have, I think I knew that's what you up. meant. <laughs> it's tip up. That's what I meant. See, I'm like I'm showing on the thing. I know that you're probably listening to this. Tip up. God, I'm a I'm a moron sometimes. But, but God heard you. It's late um, at night. Tanto or Bowie? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, Bowie. Okay. Hollow ground or flat ground? Hollow. Full size or small? Hmm. Small, I guess. Gentleman's knife or tactical? Oh, gentleman's. Automatic or bally song? Ooh. Forget about New York State for a second. Ooh. Well, ballys are legal here now. Oh. Um uh, auto. Okay, ZT or we? Oh, now you're putting me on the spot. Is Civivi included in the we conglomerate, or I'm just looking at the we line? All right, let's look. Maybe this makes it easier. Just at the we line. Oh, uh, ZT. Okay. Uh, steel will or real steel? <laughs> you're gonna get me in a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> steel will. Okay. Milled or spring clip? Oh, spring clip. Carbon fiber or micarta? Oh, micarta. Finger choil or choil free? I like I like me that choil. <laughs> uh, form or function? Oh, function. All right, and now the last one to is... to a point. T- to a point, right? You don't want something yeah, yeah, yeah. totally ugly. Yeah. Uh, so the last question is: What is the one knife that you would keep for the rest of your life if if all knife production ceased and you could only keep one? Of that I have, or that I could have, I could obtain. Let's let's do both. Okay, of of what I have, uh, it would probably be the Adam. Of what I could obtain, it would be a uh, Gareth Bull Shamwari. Oh wow! I got with somebody, some mean spirited person loaned me one, and it <laughs> ru- it ruined me. Like it's so good. So are you going to get the okay. Wii drop when you when the? Oh hell yeah, okay. yeah, they, yeah! You're not going to. They're not going to be able to get my credit card soon enough for that. They might have a hard time keeping those in. Well, yeah, that's that's yeah, cool. and that's, that's another company I don't really have a hookup with, so I'm going to have to like buy one. Start working on that. I, I already told White Mountain to make sure they give me one. I, I I love that those companies are there to bring us the knives we could never, you know, or not maybe not never, but that are so hard to get your hands on. It's, it's pretty much never with a shimmer. I mean, yeah, like yeah. like he makes like what like a hundred of them a year or something like that. I don't know. I'm just throwing a number out there, but it's not many. Yeah, and they're really expensive. And they take a long time to get after you pay for them. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah, but oh, God, it's a beautiful knife. 
Yeah, and he just sent me the most basic medium sized worker finish one. And I remember I don't remember the guy's name, but uh oh my god, it was so nice. Well, I have to get my hands on one someday just to just to touch it and and, and hold it. That's what uh, I'm actually looking forward to Blade Show for. Besides meeting all these amazing people I've met over the past year and, um, you know, seeing the knives, but it's actually holding knives. Like, there are knives, like, I've never held, held a, a bag knife. I want to hold a, a bag knife. And just... Yeah, and it's, it's it's cool, but it also hurts your soul <laughs> because, like, you can't afford them. You know, right. like, I, I sit down in the pit, which is, like, where everybody hangs out, you know, before yeah. and after the shows with... Dr. Frunky and Eugene Kwan and Shabazz and all these guys who get, who buy, they go there and spend, you know, thousands of dollars on stuff. And, and they're all flipping around. They're like amazing knives, you know, like fifth, like it was the fifth 23 came out there and they all got that, that CKF thing, which mm-hmm. is, Oh my God, it's so good. And like, you know, and they all, they've all got like various Koenig Ariuses and all kinds of stuff like that. And you're like, yeah, I bought a spider co native cheap. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's, 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 funny but yeah. you know that's what my that's what my viewers like and that's what i'm gonna stick with they yeah. people like production stuff so that's what i'm gonna give them hey man i, I like production stuff too I, I you know i have two customs to my name and and uh yeah i could sell i have a, a big collection i could sell a lot of it and get a few customs but i'm i just keep coming back to those kind of production knives. well if, if i bought a custom it'd be the most boring custom that that company had ever made so why right. do it like right. i think mokutai is hideous you get the mr furley effect when you have mocha yeah. next to carbon fiber next to yeah. damascus it, it reminds me of those those i've said this before on the live show or on some videos that it's like that it reminds me of those posters you'd see at the mall where you had to stand back and you saw a sailboat yeah. you know and yeah, it was yeah and that's what i'm in a group on instagram with a bunch of other reviewers and they'll post their you know fancy customs and i'll just say sailboat you know or <laughs> I yeah see and it's, it. Yeah, it's just like I I don't like it. I I would just buy. I'm like I just no. I just want one like you know gray, some carbon fiber, maybe some micarta, and maybe a Damascus blade, but probably not. You know, it's just like I don't want anything. I don't want anything crazy. So why spend the money? I think I just hit this perfect um, medium. Uh, I I recently sent uh, a Spanto XM18 three and a half inch to Josh at Razor Edge and mm-hmm. had him hollow grind it and and sharpen it and it is so sharp it is my absolute sharpest knife now and we're talking about a hinderer you know yeah so maybe maybe that's it you know instead how much of that how much did that run you uh a couple hundred bucks it was hmm. not bad at all and did such a beautiful job i mean like really if you scrutinize it and really look at the lines everything's perfect he did a great yeah. job and it's super sharp so maybe that's maybe that's the future for me instead of you know seeking out custom knives and getting the plainest cuz i like you i'm not so crazy uh for those materials the real fancy materials yeah. maybe it's getting the hinders the 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 striders the other knives that i really like and then having them tweaked to to my my liking anyway sir uh, i asked you for a knife story uh, anything come up? Oh, I was trying to I was trying to think of one and then I forgot for a minute. Um the cop one was good. That's probably my best one. That is uh, that's a good one. I guess I can I can tell you an injury story. Everybody has yes, those, please. right? So I had um a Viper Dan, and I don't mind calling out Viper for this because uh my knife broke and you guys wouldn't fix it. But um mm. uh I was turning a screw on it and I was, I was trying to, uh, to take it apart and the screw snapped and my, I had the blade out, didn't have it taped up like an idiot. Um, cause most knives you don't have to worry about the screw snapping off mm. and it didn't just like strip out. It snapped off and uh, yeah, I still have the scar from it. And I think, oh. I think that was like, uh, two or three weeks into the channel. So that's, yeah, that's like a year that I still can't crack that knuckle. Really? Yeah. It went all the way to the bone. I think you might have a case. Yeah, I don't can't think of any other good knife stories. I have one that's, but no, it's too off color from Blade Show. But that's that's too off color. I guess the coolest slicey dicey story I have is um, I got recognized in a Hardee's in Atlanta for at Blade Show. That was kind of cool from my voice. Really? Yeah, because I was on my phone yelling at my bank, and I was in line at Hardee's. And this guy kept looking at me and I thought he was annoyed that I was, cause I was being quite, I was quite angry at my bank at that moment. So I was yelling at my bank and then I kind of angrily hung up the phone and then he turned around and said, 
are you slicey dicey on YouTube? And I was like, Oh yeah, actually I am. He's like, Oh cool. Can you sign my shirt? So he was wearing like a blade HQ shirt. So I like signed his shirt. That was kind of cool. Cool man. And I got recognized here in Rochester once from slicey dicey. The guy didn't even really? like, yeah, I, I, he didn't know I lived here. And now like we hang out and exchange knife stories. He was wearing the same boots as me. And I was like, Oh, nice boots. And then he was like, are you slicey dicey? I was like, yeah. He goes, Oh, I didn't know you lived here. I'm like, yeah. Red Wing Iron Rangers? No, uh, Keen Targi 2s. Ooh. Yeah, they're on my feet right now, actually. <laughs> well, Brian, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank you, you again for having me. Talk with you. I've, I've watched so many hours of your videos. You're another one of these guys that uh, I feel like I already know you going into meeting you. But, man, obviously I don't, and it's been a pleasure. I, I had one guy tell me once he listens to my videos as he goes to sleep, which I'm not 100% sure how to feel <laughs> about that. So, that is weird. That is that weird. But weird. now you know you, you wield a special power. Levels. It was weird on multiple levels. So, yeah. Start putting some subliminals in those videos now. I need huh? to do knife ASMR videos. Those ones where they just whisper into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> send, send me, send me listen, all your knives. Listen, listen, to, listen to the, listen to the knife. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I think, I think, I, I think I'm missing out. Well, Slicey Dicey, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Always cool when we have uh, YouTube reviewers on the uh, the podcast, Bob. Uh, you know, different uh, perspective and uh, different uh, uh, things we learned from them. What was your uh, yeah. main takeaway in your conversation with Slicey? Well, I mean, I think he has a background of reviewing products and that's a great format with which to approach reviewing knives but i think you know obviously he's got this sick love of knives which we can all relate to but brian approaches this like a job and in doing so he and this is something i keep coming back to he's been able to maintain a discipline and also you know create a uh an online identity create a a, a identity for himself in the knife world and also you know earn a tidy uh tidy bit from that so i don't know he's kind of inspirational as well as uh, informational if you will what did he call it it was a jobby or something like that you know turning the hobby into a job yeah, it's a yeah. Jobby. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so i thought that was pretty cool yeah all right I want to ask you a favor if you could uh, we don't ask a whole lot of favors <laughs> Maybe. sounds like what i say to my daughters i ask so right. little of you that's right. Ask so little. But I do want to ask you a favor. If you are enjoying the Knife Junkie podcast, we would most appreciate if you would leave us a rating or and or a review. It would mean the world to us to kind of get a gauge on how we're doing, what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to hear, suggestions, feedback. Please go to reviewthepodcast.com. That's reviewthepodcast.com or just on your podcast player, your podcast catcher, wherever you're listening to your podcast right now, give us a heart, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, leave a rating, leave a review. If you do that, we won't bother you. We won't ask you again. <laughs> but please uh, let us know how we're doing. We'd love to hear from you. And that's going to wrap up episode number 82 of the Knife Junkie podcast. So for Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.